Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video we're going to go over free energy changes for non-standard states. So up to this point we've been talking about standard free energy changes. Uh, what about when you're under non-standard conditions? What about those situations? So let's go ahead and recap a little bit. So uh, we have that uh, the change in the free energy, the standard free energy change in a reaction only applies to those conditions in which the reactants and the products are in their standard states. So if we have an example like this one, a simple example where you have liquid water is in equilibrium to water vapor. This uh, process of going from liquid water to water vapor has a standard uh, free energy change of the reaction is positive. It's a positive 8.59 kilojoules per mole. And as we learned before, positive changes of free energy, standard free energy, uh, means that it is non-spontaneous, right? So, but we see water evaporate all the time. So what, what gives here? The reason is, is because when you spill water on the table, and it evaporates over a short period of time, that indicates that the uh, water, or at least the water uh, that we're looking at when we spill it outside of a container, uh, is not under standard conditions. So one of the standard conditions for a gas is that the gas is a, it's a pure gas and it is, has at a partial pressure of one atmosphere. So if you have something, if we're going to compare liquid water in a flask versus liquid water in open air, in the flask, you can have the water evaporate if it's a closed, if it's a closed flask or a sealed flask, the water can evaporate. The, uh, the water vapor will build up until it reaches a partial pressure of of one atmosphere at 25 degrees Celsius. So in this case, it won't evaporate. The, uh, the uh, water isn't gonna vaporize. It actually condenses because um, if we take this equilibrium here, if the forward reaction has a positive uh, change in free energy, the standard free energy change is positive, then the reverse reaction is gonna have a negative. It's going to be the same number except it's going to be negative so that means that this this reverse process is going to be spontaneous and so therefore condensation is actually going to happen so so that's if you're in a flask if you're in open air the water vapor or the vapor pressure of the water is going to be much less than one atmosphere so you're not under standard conditions and so the change in the free energy, the free, the standard free energy change of a reaction is not going to apply under these conditions. So what we need to do is for non-standard states, we need, we must calculate a change in the free energy of the reaction, not a standard. Notice that there's no circle here. Circles up here uh, mean standard states. So here, instead of the standard free energy change of a reaction, we need to calculate the non-standard uh, free energy change of the reaction in order to predict whether it's going to be spontaneous or not. And so we need a relationship. So here's the relationship that we have. So the change in the free energy, the free energy change of a reaction under non-standard states is equal to the free energy change of the reaction under standard states plus RT ln of Q, where R is the ideal gas law, and that ideal gas law is the 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So we got this under the right units, since we're talking about energy. T is temperature in Kelvin, and here we have the natural log of Q, where Q is the reaction quotient. So... So what we're going to need to do is find the reaction quotient. The reaction quotient Q, that's going to be QP 
for reactions that involve gases because we're going to need to use their pressures. So that's going to be Q, PQ. And then we use QC for reactions involving solutions. So we can go ahead and now use this equation, use this relationship here, and go back and to apply this to the equilibrium of liquid water and water vapor. And we can go ahead and look at what uh, the three different conditions or several different conditions. We can look at um, at equilibrium, before equilibrium, and, and so on. So, um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. So bear with me and give me a moment. Okay, so here uh, we're going to start with under standard conditions. So let's remind ourselves that um, under the law of mass action, uh, the reaction quotient is going to be equal to the pressure of the water vapor. Why is that? Because remember, when uh, you're writing the relationship of the law of mass action, it's going to be that the K or the Q, the uh, equilibrium constant or the reaction quotient, is going to be equal to the pressure or, uh, or um, um, the concentrations of reactants or products over reactants, except for uh, liquids and solids, right? So here we have a liquid. So liquid water is not going to be in the relationship. It's not going to be in the equation. So we only have the gas. So that's a product. So it's going to be product over reactant. Since we don't have reactants, it's just going to be uh, the pressure of the water. So the reaction quotient is equal to the pressure of water vapor. So what about under standard conditions? So if, uh, if we're under standard conditions, then the pressure of the water vapor is equal to one atmosphere. That is the standard condition. So that means that the QP is equal to one. So if we plug that into our equation here, so we have the, uh, the uh, reaction, the change in free energy of the reaction is equal to the change in the standard uh, change in uh, free energy of the reaction plus RT ln of Q. So here we're going to stick in one for Q. So that was going to be uh, delta G of the reaction is equal to the delta G standard of the reaction, the chain uh, plus RT ln of one. So when you take the natural log of one, that's zero. So that's going to drop out. So this is going to drop out. And so you end up with the um, non-standard uh, free energy change of a reaction is equal to the standard free energy change of the reaction, which is plus 8.59 kilojoules per mole, which we got from up here. So this means that the uh, reaction is going to be spontaneous in the reverse direction, not in the forward direction, as I said before. Okay, so that's under standard conditions. What about under uh, equilibrium conditions? So when you're at equilibrium, so for example, at 25 degrees Celsius, the pressure, the, pre uh, the pressure of water vapor is equal to 0 0.013 atmospheres. So when you plug that in, so the pressure is uh, atmospheres, we're going to plug that into... QP. So keep in mind that if you're at equilibrium, then the reaction quotient is going to be equal to the equilibrium constant, which is 0 0.0313 atmospheres. So you plug that in. So we're going to plug in the temperature. You got to change the temperature to Kelvin. So you add 273.15 and you get 289.15 Kelvin. And we're going to plug in our R value. So that's going to be 8.314 joules per mole. And that's going to be multiplied by the natural log of 0 0.0313. When you calculate all of that, you get the, the change in the, the, stand, uh, the change in the free energy of the reaction, non-standard, is equal to the 8.59 kilojoules per mole, which is the uh, change, uh, the free standard free energy change of the reaction. 
So that's a point. Uh, that's a positive 8.59 kilojoules per mole. And you get here a negative 8.59 times 10 to the third joules per mole. Now notice that the units here, kilojoules per mole and joules per mole are different. So joules and kilojoules. So we need to change this to kilojoules. So we divide this by a thousand. That's going to get rid of the 10 to the third power. And so you end up with positive 8.59 kilojoules per mole minus 8.59 kilojoules per mole. So that ends up being zero. So anytime you're at equilibrium, the standard, uh, the uh, free energy change of the reaction, the non-standard free energy change of the reaction is basically going to be zero, which means that neither the forward or the uh, uh, reverse direction are going to be spontaneous under this can under these conditions okay so uh one more thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go over other non-standard conditions or states or uh, that we could look at outside of either equilibrium or being in uh, a standard condition so just wait here okay so under other non-standard conditions uh, let's see what happens. So when, um, let's say we have on a dry, non-human day, the uh, vapor pressure of water is going to be 5.00 times 10 to the negative 3 atmospheres. So uh, that means that the, oops, that the QP, that should be a Q, so the uh, reaction quotient of pressure is going to be equal to 5.00 times 10 to the negative 3 atmospheres. This again is at 25 degrees Celsius. So we're going to plug everything into our equation. So here's our equation again. So we have the uh, free energy change of the reaction under non-standard conditions is equal to the free energy change of the reaction under standard conditions plus RT ln of Q. So then you stick in the data. So we're going to put this in for the uh, standard free energy changes reaction. So plus 8.59 8 kilojoules per mole. And then the uh, ideal rate law constant, 8.314 joules per mole, multiplied by T in uh, Kelvin. So that's 298 Kelvin. And multiply by the natural log of Q, which is going to be natural log of 5.00 times 10 to the negative 3. So when we do the calculation, we get positive 8.59 kilojoules per mole plus a negative 13.1 times 10 to the third joules per mole. Again, we have joules here, kilojoules here. We'll divide this by 1,000 to get it to uh, kilojoules. So here we get plus 8.59 kilojoules per mole, minus 13.1 kilojoules per mole, and we end up with a negative 4.5 kilojoules per mole. So under these non-standard conditions, the non-standard uh, free energy change of the reaction is going to be uh, negative. So that means that the... Uh, the reaction is going to be spontaneous in the forward, re, uh, forward process. And so that's the last thing I wanted to show you. So uh, I hope this was helpful uh, in understanding non-standard states and free energy changes under non-standard states. So if you like this video, please hit that like button right there. Please uh, share this video with others. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell right up there so you can be notified by other videos I put out. Um, and also, put a comment down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. If you got any questions, I'd love to answer questions. Thanks for joining me, and have a great day.